Welcome to the Gospel Saves podcast, a program that discusses all matters related to the Christian faith. I'm Wade Stanley, an evangelist with the Church of Christ. Please visit thegospelsaves.me for blogs, videos, and Bible studies. You can also find The Gospel Saves on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. From the earliest moments of his ministry, Jesus echoes the message of John the Baptist, announcing that the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom arrived with power on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the apostles and Peter declared Jesus risen from the dead. The church is the kingdom of God. On our last program, we left off talking about what it means to be a part of the church. We were discussing how God has called us by his gospel. He has set us apart for salvation. And he's done this by foreknowledge. He foreknew those whom he predestined. God has had a plan for his church from the very beginning. And by foreknowledge, he chose people who would choose him and has made a way for them to hear the gospel down through the centuries. So this is a very special thing to be a part of God's ecclesia, to be a part of God's people. This is no ordinary organization. This is no common group of people. God has gone to extraordinary ends to bring us into this body. And it's important for us to realize that a church is is not a building, not in a literal sense. The church is made up of the people, the people who have responded in faith, the people who have obeyed, the people who have, have committed to gathering together, assembling together in the Lord's name. That's what it means to be the church. This morning, I'd like to consider the church from the perspective of, of being a kingdom or a nation. We find in those those gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that the approach of the kingdom in the ministry of Christ was an imminent event. From the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus declares, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in that, Jesus is is echoing the message which John the baptizer preached in his ministry as well. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In order for something to be at hand, it it must be close, nearby. Not only does Jesus preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he also instructs his apostles to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He commands the 70 to declare, the kingdom of God has come near you. And he promises the apostles, assuredly I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. He takes it a step further in Luke chapter 22, verses 28 through 30. He says, but you are those, and he's talking to the apostles here, but you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow on you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me. Now, let's put all this together. John the baptizer preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The apostles preached the kingdom of of heaven is at hand. The 70 preached the kingdom of God has come near you. Jesus promised his apostles that some of them would see the kingdom of God present with power. And on the night of his betrayal, he promises to his apostles that he would bestow on them a kingdom. This is why I say the kingdom, the arrival of the kingdom, was an imminent event, one that the Savior promised the apostles they would see in their lifetime. And then take what Jesus has to say in the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come. Jesus was praying for the arrival of his Father's kingdom. Now in Matthew chapter 16, Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ. And subsequently, Jesus gives Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, a key simply represents the authority to open something. Now, after Peter's confession, fairly soon after, 
Jesus predicts in Mark 9 and 1, and I've already quoted this one time, Assuredly I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. So Jesus gives Peter the keys to the kingdom. He says that kingdom will be seen by you in your lifetime, and you'll see it arrive with power. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, after his resurrection, Jesus says the apostles would receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Did you catch that? In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, following his resurrection, Jesus commands the apostles to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. He gives Peter the keys to the kingdom. He says, You'll see the kingdom present with power. He says, stay in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And then in Acts chapter 1, just before his ascension, Jesus says the apostles would receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Remember, the book of Acts is a companion book to Luke. So, he promises the kingdom would arrive with power in their lifetime. He tells them to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until they're endued with power from on high. He says in Acts chapter 1 that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them. And guess what happens in Acts chapter 2? The Holy Spirit comes upon them and he comes upon them with power. He enables those men to speak in languages that they did not know. These were not their native tongues. That's power. And when a crowd gathers because of the, the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and they hear the apostles speaking in these languages that are familiar because you've got Jews from all over the Mediterranean world and the Middle East there in Jerusalem for this day of Pentecost. Peter rises up and begins to preach that first gospel sermon following the resurrection of Jesus. He declares that Jesus is the Christ, He is the Messiah, He is the Son of God, and we can trust in this because He has risen from the dead. And what was Peter given because of his confession earlier that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God? He was given the keys of the kingdom. So notice the logical progression. Peter would open the kingdom. It would be present with power. The apostles were endued with power through the Holy Spirit, and Peter first preached salvation in Jesus' name. It looks to me like the kingdom arrived on that day of Pentecost. Because Peter opens the kingdom up. Now that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, now that he has completed his redemptive work, now the kingdom is open. And as Luke concludes, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, God added to the church daily those who were being saved. The church is the kingdom of God. At least it's the kingdom of God in this world. And it's a kingdom that's unlike any other in this world because it's a spiritual kingdom. When Jesus was before Pilate, He says to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Jesus acknowledges that the nature of his kingdom is not of this earth. It's not of this world. He says if it were, his disciples, his servants, would rise up and rebel in order to rescue him from the clutches of Pilate and the Jewish Sanhedrin. He says in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, he says this to the Pharisees, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here, see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. You see, it's a spiritual kingdom. It's not like the kingdoms of this world. It's a kingdom that resides in the hearts of those who call upon the name of the Lord. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, Paul says that Christ has delivered us from the power of darkness 
and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Actually, that's God that has done that. He has conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you have been conveyed, you have been translated into the kingdom of God. In Ephesians 2 and 6, in the parallel passage, Paul says that God has raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is a spiritual reality. If you are a part of the church... You are a part of the kingdom. You are sitting together with Christ in heavenly places. You have been conveyed there. And as Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, if you're a part of the church, you are a holy nation. As members of the church, we are made citizens of the kingdom of God. Paul says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Citizenship is, a, is an interesting concept. Paul used his Roman citizenship to his advantage in his ministry. You might remember in Acts chapter 22, verses 24 through 29, Paul landed in the middle of a, of a real problem. He was in the temple, and some Jews from Asia saw him. They recognized him, and they stirred up a crowd, and that crowd rose up against Paul, began to beat him, caused a huge problem. Some Roman soldiers come and intercede. Paul asks for an opportunity to talk with the crowd, and he does. And as soon as he talks about taking the, the good news of Jesus to the Gentiles, it just makes them even more angry. And the, the commander of the, the Roman soldiers decides, well, maybe we ought to take this guy back with us and, and beat him and see what's causing all these problems. And in that moment, Paul used his Roman citizenship to his advantage. Roman citizens were not to be beaten. They were to be tried, tried fairly. If they were guilty, they could be punished by execution, but they had to be treated differently than you would treat non-citizens. And Paul was a citizen because he was born a citizen. He was born in a, a Roman city, Tarsus of Cilicia. And not coincidentally, in order to be part of God's kingdom, in order to be a citizen of God's kingdom, you also have to be born into the kingdom of God. Thanks for listening to the Gospel Saves podcast. If you found this program useful, please visit thegospelsaves.me to find blogs, videos, and Bible studies. If you enjoyed the music on this podcast, please visit acapeldridge.com. You can also find Acapeldridge on Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Facebook. May God bless you as you seek to know His perfect will. Oh,